Brian says, how do you use call rail phone tracking for a client's GMB account or on other properties? Because won't that create an NAP consistently problem? Yeah, Brian. So you don't use, you know, I'm talking about when you set up an asset, start off using your own tracking numbers. If you have a client that you need to track numbers for, um, all right. I know there's a AdWords phone number that you, you can add additional numbers to GMB. Uh, to a Google My Business listing. So as far as um, if all you're doing is trying to track calls through the Google My Business listing, then you could have both phone numbers in there because Google will be aware of both numbers. So your NAP from your citations would still be built to the customer's number, but you could have the GMB listing displaying your tracking number as long as the customer's phone number is still in the GMB dashboard as, you know, as, because you can add more than one number is what I'm saying. But you would make the primary number your tracking number. Now, I haven't tested that in quite some time. I don't know if that's going to cause problems with existing citations out there, and NAP inconsistency. My point is Google, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I know for a fact, and I've talk, spoke with, uh, I've, I've talked on the phone with Google support rep, uh, Google My Business support reps about this. I have a client that has a physical location that is displayed in incorrectly in Google Maps. When I edit the info, it's a storefront business. It's a preschool. When I edit the info for the store, you know, the location of the business, it's always correct. It's been added or inputted correctly to GMB. Yet GMB or Google My Business, Google Maps displays the address in a different format. And so I contacted them and said, well, how am I supposed to build, you know, business directories listings? Should I use the correctly formatted address the way that the United States Postal Service says it should be, you know, standard address formatting? Or should I use what's displayed? And and the Google reps have said to me that I should use what the, the correct uh, address format that is entered in the back end or the, the you know, the, the, um, the Google My Business dashboard. Even though Google is displaying it differently, they're displaying it differently because the other addresses in that shopping center are displayed that way. So it's the more common display type. So all the citations are built with the correct formatted address, which does not match what shows on the Google My Business, if that makes sense. So my point is, and yet I've never had any problems with that listing. I was able to get it ranked very, very quickly and it's ranked today. That's been a client of mine now for a little over a year. So my point is, I know that that as long as the in, the data on the back end is inputted correctly, the Google is aware of it. So it shouldn't cause you any problems if you want to add your tracking number as the display number in GMB, as long as the primary business number is still included in the GMB dashboard. But again, I have not tested that specifically. It should work, but I haven't tested it. The only other way that you could do it would be to set up the listing with that number or flat out just the tracking number, I mean, or flat out change it and then do a citation cleanup. But then that puts you in control of their phone number across all their listings, not just their maps listing. And most clients aren't going to go for that. So as far as tracking other results, remember you have GMB insights um, and you, you should have probably access to analytics. So if you're doing work for your clients, uh, then you should, you know, you should always take screenshots when you start the project. And then I take screenshots monthly so that we have a, a progression that they can always go back and look at screenshots side by side or scroll through them in a folder and look and see the type of results, you know, increases in impressions, increase in number of keywords, you know, increase in traffic numbers, uh, decrease in rank or, you know, like, a, um, uh, you know, getting higher in the search results, you know, that kind of stuff. All of those are kind of metrics that you can show to prove what you're doing. If you're not tracking calls specifically, that was a good question. We're almost call, rail, call rail has dynamic call tracking or call insertion, or I, I forget what it's called in, in call rail, but look, look, look into that. So you, that you can track results for the client. Now, as far as GMB, get your own assets and redirect the calls to the client. You track them in call rail, you send them to the client's number. Everybody's happy. Yep. Uh, he says, I asked the press cable guys, but Dan says if they could tell me which purge their, which purged their press releases. And this was their response. Please be advised that all new sites purge PRs from sites. And that's not true. Because Digital Journal, I know for a fact, has PRs that I've published that are still live from years ago 
they're still link targets. They're, they're so digital journals one. That's not that's absolutely not true. Most of them probably do at some point. Um, for example, and I've said this before. NBC twenty nine is the Richmond, Virginia um, NBC affiliate. And Richmond is the capital of Virginia. And so NBC 29, every time a press release gets published for a Virginia, you know, a client of mine or one of my lead gen assets that are in Virginia, the NBC 29 press release typically ranks very, very well. Um, but I've seen those live as many as six months later. I think six months is when they is like the definitive cutoff point where they purge for those. But I've also seen like no shit uh, 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 on the NBC 29 domain, the press release purge within two weeks. So I really don't understand when that, like, you know, sometimes it's two weeks, sometimes it's a month, sometimes it's six weeks, sometimes it's six months. So I don't understand what their criteria is for purging. Uh, and so there may be some publications out there that it's a year and then they purge them or whatever. But that's why, like, I, I went back through the local PR pro training and I very specifically talked about if, with the PR stacking that you should really know the services that you're using to identify which are the best uh, stacking targets. In other words, which find ones that are permanent. And that's why I love press advantage. And that's why we use it so much. And we sell press advantage press releases, right? Because the press advantage domain itself is, is powerful. You get an organization page, which is a great link target. It's fabulous. Plus it's got iframes embedded. It's, it's, it's awesome guys. But then the actual press releases from press advantage rank very well. They're very well written. You get a do follow NAP, uh, NAP and a do follow link on it. It's, it's just really, really strong and they don't purge. And so those become now are, are my primary link targets for a PR stack are my press advantage PRs or uh, digital journal, which are all no follow links, but it's still powerful. Um, and then if you're, if you are submitting press releases through press cable, you'll notice that, um, and it might only be on premium distribution, but you'll get distributed out to uh, newswire.net, newswire.net. I don't think they purge from there either. And that's another good link target. So I would check into that, Dan. I can't remember though, cause I have press, I have a subscription to press cable too. I don't remember if, um, Newswire.net newswire is only for the premium distribution or if that's part of the regular distribution.